In this movie, you portray a passionate mother of a young, precocious girl. What attracted you to the role of Sandy Winters? First of all, the, the um, just long discussions with our director prior to the film and what she had wanted, her vision for what she wanted the film to be, which was really about this mother-daughter relationship and about um, how they're there for one another, how they need each other, and how they're teaching each other um, to be strong. Um, and I think that the chance to work with Sterling, we had gotten to know each other prior to the, to the filming. And just the idea of talking, telling a story that's an unconventional story, but that happens more often than we realize. And that deals with very uncomfortable a really uncomfortable topic and how do you discuss that with someone who's so young that it attracted me to the part. Starling, what was the most challenging part of your role as Daisy Winters? Um, the most challenging part, I think everything probably. <laughs> <laughs> with when you're acting in like a scene, you have to think about everything that's happening. When we got to the ending scenes of the film, I think it got harder and harder because you had to think about everything that Daisy was going through and all the emotions that went into it. She had to be happy, but at the same time, she was, she had all these other emotions that were like building up in her that she couldn't show. And I think that was hard but also it was fun to play and interesting. Uh, much like um, Terms of Endearment or Steel Magnolias, um, the death of a primary character is crucial to the plot of Daisy Winters. How was it to play a character that with a terminal illness? Uh, it's so interesting because the, the terminal illness aspect of, of, of her story almost wasn't the, a focus. You know, the, the, the focus really for me and, and, and really talking with Beth, our director, about this just really at length was that it wasn't about showing someone being sick. You know, it was about someone facing the very, very possible fact that her daughter was going to have to, for all intents and purposes, raise herself. And how do you prepare somebody you love for that when the last thing in the world that you want that to be is true? And you know that I think it wasn't about me in the hospital or it wasn't about losing my hair, or it wasn't about any of that. It was about the sort of the, the, the fatigue and, the, and how do you keep fighting, and what are you really fighting for at a certain point? And it really quickly becomes channeled to fighting for her and, and fighting for my daughter to, to, learn, to learn how to continue on in the healthiest way possible under the worst circumstances. Brooke, you've spent a lot of years doing comedy and theater and things very different from, <laughs> from Daisy Winters. <laughs> yeah. How how was this different as far as approach for you? Oh, I coming from that. I, I was kicking and screaming. I really I, I tried to talk Beth out of me. <laughs> um, I don't know why. It, it obviously had nothing to do with this one because she made it much more possible for me to do it. But. Um, it was fear, you know. I'm I'm happy in, in the comedic world, and I and I I'm confident in it. Um, and I think that this is, you know, when you're sort of much much younger, you you know, you want the angst and you want the pain, and you sort of hit a certain age, you're like, I'm good. <laughs> I, I, I don't want. I got enough in my real life. I'm okay. Um, and you know, Beth really convinced me that this was um, sort of necessary for me as an actor and. And she believed in me in, in a way that really nobody had ever really believed in me, I mean, in decades. Um, and you start to lose the belief in yourself after a period of time. Um, and you fall into what's comfortable. And so out of the blue, this woman 
hunting me down and saying I have to be this character and and I'm thinking you really must have the wrong number um, and she just she, she got me out of my comfort zone and, and everything and she allowed me to um, you know find faith so, in myself Charlie, how was it to balance school and work on the set? Was that hard? Um, yeah, it's pretty hard. Yeah. You have like a tutor on set, of course. I think my school is pretty helpful with that. Um, I think definitely to find like your right tutor, I think we had to switch the tutor in like the middle of the film, oh, wow. which is really hard because yeah. you have two different teachers. Um, but overall, it's a process, but we worked it out. <laughs> and we were just talking about high school. So yeah. We're already we're yeah. in the yeah. So. yeah, it definitely was not, it was a part of it. And mm -hmm. that was important, you know. Yeah. It was important for me as a mom and as a previously a child a actor um, to, to just give that respect as well, you know, mm -hmm. because that's that's what your life, you know, is also part of that. And, and the stronger that part is, the more you're able to inform your characters as you grow, you know, and I, and I was very relieved that everybody, you know, really did take it seriously. When I was a kid, they were, it was a burden to everybody. It was like, ugh, she's got to go to school, you know, and. Yeah, how was your experience? Not, not. Compared to, with not Sterling. This, not this kind, no, yeah. they, they, they wanted me to 14 hours, 16, 18 hours a day, no school, you know, bleeding and still showing up. Um, early, <laughs> so definitely Very changed a little since my Very era. Yeah. <laughs> the the on screen chemistry and the, the emotional bond that you that you have um, is is just really believable and endearing. Um, what do you contribute uh, that authenticity to? I mean, how I, did you get that? I, I wanted to make sure that we had some time prior, you know, that we really sort of that I wasn't just coming in and going, okay, hey, you know, I'm going to be your mom and and this is it, we've got to emote and, you know, we sort of, it was important for me to understand who Sterling was, not just as a young girl, woman, but, you know, as a, as a performer, as an actor and, and, you know, you have to really balance that and you also can't forget that we're making a movie and and she's a young person, and that needs to be respected too, you know? So I think for me the most important part to be in such difficult scenes was her work ethic and her commitment. You know, to me, we both knew we could be safe within that environment because we were in there, in it together, and we had a director who protected both of us and the story and really just created this kind of this zone around us, you know, and we were, I think, we learned to be safe with each other very quickly. Daisy Winters is being released uh, this holiday season. What are, what are your plans for the holidays? What do you guys do during Christmas and Thanksgiving? What are you going to do this Christmas? Um, you have your school. Yeah, um, I have school off. I'm going to be with my family. And I'm and looking forward to seeing the film. Yeah, really. Um, we're um, we sort of try to keep traditions with my with my family. I don't think my girls um, really want to see the film. I don't think they've ever they really prepared to see this from yeah. their mom. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, they you know they're like, Mom, Sterling looks like your daughter for real life. <laughs> I'm like, well. We, it works. <laughs> you know, I've got little redheaded, you know, who probably don't have eyebrows and have freckles. Like, so they're like, we don't get it, Mom. Um, so, um, you know, they're, they like the idea that, that I got to play a mom, but um, it's a pretty sad story, and I don't think they, yeah. they don't want to see it. Me. I wondered, Sterling, what what you like most about Daisy, about your character? How did you um, identify with her? Um, well, uh, Daisy is very complex and she has a lot of personality traits that she sort of keeps inside herself, how loving she is. She doesn't really show that when she's with her friends. And um, I got to tap into a different side of myself 
got to be a little mischievous in my own way. Bossy. <laughs> and bossy, a definitely. Bossy. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, it was really fun, and I got to keep um, my loving self and like everything how I feel towards Brooke and my own mom I got to keep that but then at the same time I got to do all these all all these other personalities that were so much fun and I got to I don't know I got to play Daisy as like I was Daisy nobody else was Daisy I wasn't playing the character I got to be the character which I felt was really fun I mean, I think that that's, a, again, another a testament to what Beth was able to create. Yeah. You know, we weren't, there were we were in an environment where, you know, Sterling was able to be a young girl, was able to be playful, was able to be serious, thoughtful. You know, we, you, you're allowed to understand that her brain, the way her brain works might not, might be more mature than her age but still doesn't mean she's an adult, you know, there's this balance. And so the f when those flip moments, like when, when I would, when Daisy and I would be together and we would have these on camera but little inside jokes or little, little things or, and you felt the history of their relationship, you know, yeah, and a lot definitely. of that was humor. A lot of it was, you know, what do you do with fear? You know, what do you do with that? And you, when you need to, you laugh. When you need to, you cry. And when you need to, you just hug each other and say, like, okay, let's just take a breath and get to the next moment in our life, you know? And yeah. we were able to sort of experience that. And there was a lot of quiet that Beth created, you know, a lot of scenes that weren't just muddled with dialogue, you know, and, and, and pace. And, you know, and for me, it was uncomfortable. You know, I like a punchline, and I like to know mm -hmm. the timing of it, deliver it in and out, you know, you're done, and, you know, or you dance your way into it, you know. <laughs> and, and there are these uncomfortable moments that were long and quiet, and in them, you know, you just, oh, your heart just swells and it breaks. 